Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to describe an electrochemical cell and differentiate between galvanic and electrolytic cells. We'll see that we have something called galvanic cell and we have something called electrolytic cells. We'll find out a difference between them. We'll learn the Nernst equation and we'll try to apply the Nernst equation to find the EMF of a galvanic cell. We'll derive the relationship between the standard potential of the cell, the Gibbs free energy of the cell reaction and its equilibrium constant. So there's a relationship between the standard potential, the Gibbs energy and the equilibrium constant. So we'll try to derive that relationship for a cell. We'll define the terms called resistivity, conductivity, molar conductivity for an ionic solution. We'll try to differentiate between the electrolytic and electronic conductivity. Electronic conductivity is only for the metals and this ionic conductivity is for the electrolytes. We'll describe the method for preparation, measurement of conductivity of what electrolytic solution. So measuring the conductivity of a metal is easy but measuring conductivity of electrolytic solution is a little difficult and also we will try to find their molar conductivity. We will justify why there is a variation in the conductivity and the molar conductivity of the solution with change in concentration. There is a, there is a variation the conductivity and the molar conductivity of a solution vary based on their concentration. So we will see why they are varying and why how they are varying. Uh, we'll also try to enunciate Colross law and we'll learn its application. We'll understand the aspects of electrolysis. We'll describe the construction of primary and secondary batteries and also fuel cells. And at last we'll explain corrosion and we'll explain corrosion as electrochemical process. So those things we'll study in this chapter, right? We'll first understand galvanic cell and electrolytic cell. We'll use the Nernst equation. We'll find the relationship between the standard potential, Gibbs energy and equilibrium constant. We'll define the term resistivity, conductivity, molar conductivity. We'll differentiate between ionic and electronic conductivity. We'll tell you how to measure conductivity of electrolytic solution and we'll also find molar conductivity. We'll justify why the conductivities in the molar conductivity vary for electrolytic solution on change in their concentration. We'll also enunciate Colross law and understand electrolysis. Also, we'll discuss the construction of primary and secondary cells and we'll explain corrosion. So the question is, what is electrochemistry? The whole chapter is about electrochemistry. So if you understand this term electro plus chemistry electro is what electricity and chemistry is my chemi chemistry so any relationship between chemical and electricity or chemical reaction I'll say. right so that relation is studied in electro chemistry you must be thinking, right, there is a chemical, let's suppose sulfuric acid. How is that linked to electricity? But there is a link and that link we will try to understand in this chapter called electrochemistry. So the definition of electrochemistry is nothing but it is the study of production of electricity from energy released during spontaneous chemical reaction and vice versa that is nothing but use of electric energy to bring about non-spontaneous chemical reaction. Please understand this word spontaneous and non-spontaneous we have discussed this spontaneous and non-spontaneous in other chapters I'll, I'll uh, touch upon this in the next slide also so what we are trying to say is you have this chemical reaction you have this chemical reaction and that chemical reaction is spontaneous that means it happens on its own and it releases free energy right to move to a lower state so from this spontaneous chemical reaction you are producing electricity that is one aspect 
For example, in this case, the example of galvanic cell, I'll tell you what is this galvanic cell. The next thing we do in electrochemistry is other way round. We take the electricity, for example, we use this electricity and this electricity is used to drive non-spontaneous reaction. Why not non-spontaneous reaction? Why we are using non-spontaneous here? Why are we are not using spontaneous? See, if this reaction, if a reaction is spontaneous, you don't need the external source like electricity to, uh, to make it happen, right? It will happen on its own. But some reactions are non-spontaneous, that means they don't happen on, it, on their own. For that, you need external source of energy. So here we supply external source of energy and the reaction happens. For example, hydrolysis of water. If you keep water as it, it won't hydrolyze. You need some external energy to hydrolyze water. So that's the non-spontaneous reaction. We'll talk about these things later. And let's understand the definition that electrochemistry is nothing but first is the production of electricity using spontaneous chemical reaction. The other is the reverse way. You have the electricity, use an electricity to perform a non-spontaneous reaction. Right? And if you see in, in all these cases, we deal with the redox reaction. And these redox reactions are generally separated and they are connected by electric circuit. We will we'll tell you why it is. Normally redox reaction, any redox reaction if you see has transfer of electrons, right? Electrons transfer. So if you, if you somehow transfer the electrons via the circuit, you will generate current. And that's what they do, right? They, they perform redox reaction in different containers and somehow the electrons are transferred via the circuit and that produce electric current. That's the basis of electrochemistry. You will understand this when you will uh, learn more about different kind of reactions. Thus understand spontaneous and non-spontaneous reaction once again. I will not go deep into this uh, topic because we have discussed this in the last few chapters. Uh, but just the definition, spontaneous reaction is nothing but the reaction that release free energy that release free energy correct and it moved to a lower state more thermodynamic very stable state so this process is one direction process it, it moves in one direction without without any external source of energy Right? For example, if you see melting of ice, melting of ice is one example of spontaneous. You just keep the ice, it will melt on its own. You don't need external source of energy for that. You have this salt and you dissolve in water, salt, and you dissolve in water, it will dissolve on its own. Rusting of iron, if you see in the normal uh, uh, STP, the iron will rust on its own. In fact, you must be uh, curious the diamond also converts into the normal carbon on its own, it, though it takes long time, right? Also smell, if you have some smell, it diffuses in the room, in the room. These are examples of spontaneous reaction. One thing I want to tell, in spontaneous reaction, it, not, it need not be instant, right? The word spontaneous is a little confusing. The word spontaneous says that it is instant, but it is not instant. For example, rusting of iron is not instant. Converting diamond to carbon is not instant, right? Though the smell uh, diffusion is instant, but these two are not instant. So spontaneous only means that delta G is negative. That's all. Non-spontaneous just reverse. Delta G is positive. That means you have to provide extra source of energy to have this reaction happen, right? External energy source is required. And once the external energy source is required, the reaction stops, right? Reaction stops when external energy source stops. Correct. For example, hydrolysis of water. 
so if you pass current water will hydrolyze the moment you stop current it won't happen so these kind of reactions are non spontaneous reaction where external source of energy is required delta g is positive spontaneous reaction delta g is gibbs free energy change is negative and it releases energy on its own right without any external source burning of coal is also one example burning of petrol is also one example of spontaneous reaction now let's study the electrochemistry in our life so here we'll try to explain why do we need electrochemistry in our life what is the point of studying electrochemistry so if you see the, all the electronic gadgets almost all the electronic gadgets we see runs on battery right if you see the clock the mobile phone the camera the inverters laptop torch even the music players the calculator even the uh, go green eco green cars right these all runs on battery correct and if you see the word electronic these are electronic gadgets as if i said told the electronic word came from the word electrons and electron is a chemical word right electron is nothing something we read in chemistry correct so even if i am talking about the electronic word actually i am talking about electron and i'll show you how electron is the driving force and this electron comes from chemical reaction chemical reaction so electricity also word if you see electricity word also has electron correct electricity also word has this electron so it is electron which is responsible for electricity actually an electron comes from chemical reaction right electron comes from chemical reaction it's chemistry so there is a deep connection between the current and chemistry and that is electrochemistry right so all the electronic device if you see the electron what is there and they all come from electrons i'll explain you why right they all come from electrons but all these runs on batteries all these run on batteries you see they are different kind of batteries and all these batteries run on chemical reaction so in all these batteries some chemical reaction happen i'll explain you these kind of batteries right all this chemical reaction that happens in this battery but understand that in all these batteries the chemical reaction happens and it is this chemical reaction which gives electric current correct so as i told the electron is the one which is responsible for all the current and thus electricity also has this word electron electronic also what has this electron all these electrons that come out of chemical reactions that is responsible for the current the rusting of iron if you see the rusting of iron is a pretty big issue huge amount of money is wasted every year right a lot of accident also happen the bridge collapse but the good thing is if you know this electrochemistry well you can apply this electrochemistry to prevent this you can prevent this rusting of iron correct electroplating if you see this is this is not gold actually it may be some silver article or iron article also but with the electroplating you get a good look and feel jewelries and other stuffs are made by electroplating so electroplating also is nothing but a gift of electrochemistry so it is in electrochemistry you study how to do electroplating correct the green earth if you see if you know electrochemistry well because the electrochemistry is what electrochemistry is nothing but chemical reaction which produces electricity and we know that electricity is very much required for us even the the video which you are watching now you are watching because of electricity right so electricity is very much required the fans the uh, tubes the laptops cameras anything you talk about the heaters anything you talk about that means electricity it has become a very important part of our life so if we know electrochemistry well we can find efficient methods to produce electricity right efficient methods efficient methods to produce electricity 
and with this we can save earth correct because the current methods the earlier method also we have been improving day by day the earlier method is not that great it was um, not eco friendly but since if you understand this electrochemistry well right you become expert in this you may develop new methods which are eco friendly which are good for earth right so it helps to create more eco friendly technology so if we talk about all this nervous system in the body right the whole nervous system the whole nervous system the transmission of all the sens sensory signals to the cells to the brains and vice versa all this communication between the cells are known to have electrochemical energy these these are known to have some electrochemical origin actually so the, these have some electrochemistry involved there right and the, a large number of metals sodium sodium hydroxide fluorine etc hydrogen gas chlorine gas you can produce a large number of metals so i'll write here production of large number of elements i can say and lots of metals production and purification also production and purification so using uh, electrochemistry we can do that we'll explain you how to do this production and purification of large number of uh, elements so electrochemistry if you see has a huge importance in our life right the laptop desktop camera everywhere we have electricity electricity we need something to generate normally battery and everything runs on chemical reactions so if it's just told the production of all this uh, chemicals we use electrochemistry so if you see the whole cells cells is nothing but electrochemical cells or electrolytic cell the cell is divided into two part either electrochemical cells or electrolytic cells electrochemical cells are the one which produce current produce electricity and they use electrolytic cells they use electricity for non spontaneous reaction as as i told so here they use a spontaneous reaction to produce electricity so as i told electrochemistry you do either one either of these either you use spontaneous reaction to produce electricity or you you use electricity to have a non spontaneous reaction so electrochemical cells are also called galvanic or voltaic cell in the name in the honor of vol voltas and uh, galvani i'll explain you why why the, uh, they have such a critical importance in the electrochemical world so it is just in the honor of the founder of uh, electrochemical cells the galvani and voltaic right this is the look and feel of galvanic and voltaic cell anyway we'll explain this in details in the next few slide before we understand the whole chapter it's good to understand the history of electrochemistry thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again